Welcome to Sunday service. Uh, so glad you could join. Um, let's uh, come before God and really give Him our hearts. Let's begin with the Apostles' Creed. Let's confess our faith together. Ready to begin? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth in the right of God the Father Almighty, from this shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. So come before our God and uh, really give Him our hearts. Let's just be honest with him. God, uh, uh, I'm feeling like this right now. God, I have uh, these kind of issues that I want to bring up to you. God, I feel great and I just want to worship you with all of my heart. Whatever situation you are, let's just come before him with an honest heart and ask him to help us worship him with all of our hearts. Let's pray together. Father, we come before you. We ask that you help us to come before you with an honest heart. Whatever situation, whatever heart condition we may be in, we believe that you have the power to move us and guide us. Your love is so great that it will uh, break down any barriers that are between us. So help us, Father, so that we can worship you with all of our hearts right now. Let's sing the welcome baby for us. The Lord has been made before, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because God has served us only our triumph. My God will never fail. Love came down and rescued me. Love came down and set me free. Yeah. 
Numbers 13, 25 to 28. Let's read in one voice. This is the word of God. At the end of 40 days, they returned from exploring the land. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They gave Moses this account. We went into the land to which you sent us, and it does flow with milk and honey. Here is its fruit. But the people who live there are powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw descendants of Anak there. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you, and we ask that you speak to us right now, and help us to put aside all distractions, and dedicate this time to you in faith. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God has blessed us with many wonderful senses. There's five main senses. It's sight, touch, um, taste, feel, right, and smell. What is the one sense that you absolutely cannot live without? It's difficult to choose because all of them are so vital, so important. Imagine if we lost even one of these senses. It would be utterly devastating. These are all amazing gifts from God. And I think one of the most important senses out of these is the ability to see. With our eyes, we can see where we're going. We can see loved ones. We can see God's beautiful creation. 
but our sight can be dangerous because what we see can heavily determine how we live as Christians. If we see good things, we are generally happy. If we see not so good things, negative emotions and reactions can occur and sin can occur. In our passage today, we see that God promised the Israelites the promised land called Canaan. Although they were enemies living there, God promised them victory. All they had to do was, by faith, enter the land. But the leaders wanted to spy out the land and check out how wonderful the land was, and also check out who the people uh, that were occupying the land were, and how fortified the cities, and etc. And so representatives from each tribe, along with Joshua and Caleb, a total of 12 men went to spy the land. And the land was indeed amazing. Remember, the Israelites needed to farm and to take care of their animals. And so this land was simply perfect. They brought back a sample of the fruit there, and the grapes were huge and beautiful. But they also saw the enemies. And if we look in verse 28, the people who lived there were powerful. The cities were fortified and very large. And they began to fear. Because they spied the land, they were led um, into this fear. This shows us how dangerous it is to question God. If they believed in His promises and took that land by faith, they would not have fallen into this fear. But they question God and His Word and His promises. When we begin to question God, that is when fear settles into our hearts. And let's see uh, chapter 14, verse 2, well, uh, how the Israelites um, reacted when they heard these news. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness, the <clears throat> spies, they feared so much that they began to tell all the people and all the Israelites about it. And the Israelites began to worry so much that they said that they'll rather have died in Egypt or in this wilderness. God loved the Israelites so much that He delivered them from slavery in Egypt. And in this desert, He always provided for them. And He said He'll give them this promised land, this wonderful land, all they have to do is take it. But instead, they began to complain and question God's love for them. And they even wished to die in the desert. Because of this great sin, God gives them what they wished for. They would not be allowed to go into the promised land for 40 years. And all the adults were not permitted to go into the promised land and would die in uh, those 40 years. We can see that once again, words have power. Our words have power. God made the world by His words, and He made us in His image, and He allowed our words to have power as well. That is why words can be very discouraging and encouraging to us. This means we need to be careful of how we speak. We can't just say, man, I wish I died in Egypt. Things like that. But also, those same words are powerful when we pray to God. And when we read God's Word, those words have power. There's power in prayer and in God's words. Caleb and Joshua saw the same exact land, the same people living there, but said to the people that God will give them this land. But the people would not listen. And they wanted to kill them. As I mentioned in the beginning, our sight is very important, but it can be dangerous. The ten men were filled with fear. And the two men, Caleb and Joshua, who saw the same exact situation, these two groups had two totally different reactions. Brothers and sisters, this is faith. Jesus said that in this world we will have trouble and all of us have similar and different troubles, similar and different temptations. But what separates those who fall into temptation, 
who fall into fear versus those who are strong in faith? What separates those two groups? Once again, it is what our eyes are focused on. If their eyes are focused on the giants, then of course there is no chance to have hope. Likewise, if our eyes are focused on the struggles and the temptations, of course we have no chance to succeed. The key is to put our eyes on God, to put our hope in Him. Let's read Psalm 121, 1 and 2 together. 1, 2, 3. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. We need to lift up our eyes, brothers and sisters, and we need to put our eyes on God. When we do that, we will be able to see that, yes, there are obstacles before us, but that there is an even greater God on your side. What hardships, brothers and sisters, are you focused on this morning? Let's put our eyes on God. Let's take our eyes away from these things and put our eyes on God. As we say today, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, God. Let's let him fight for us. When we look at our brother Peter in um, the New Testament, remember when Jesus was walking on water and Peter said, Lord, let me come to you. And he was able to walk on water. It was an absolute miracle that was happening. He was walking in faith. But what happened in Matthew 14, 30? When he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. When he started to fix his eyes on the problem, on the wind, on the waves, he began to sink. And Jesus told Peter that he lacked faith. What is faith? It may be a hard word, brothers and sisters, if we ask, right, what is faith? It is keeping our eyes on God. It is keeping our eyes on Jesus. He will get you through any difficult time. He will get you through any difficult temptation. He will get us through. All we have to do is keep our eyes on Him. Where are your eyes focused on? Where are your eyes fixed on this morning, brothers and sisters? Your schoolwork, your future, your pressures, your fears, your worries, your distractions, your gains. When we put our eyes on God, He will help us through. He will help give us that faith and that determination and that, um, that, that belief that we will get through whatever comes our way. So let's put our eyes on God. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. And we see that the Israelites, um, by faith, all they had to do is believe in your powerful words and in your promises. But they said, okay, let's first spy out the land and then, and then let's go. But as they questioned your words, as they spied this land, fear began to settle in their hearts. Father, likewise, when we focus on the things of this world, we will be burdened. We will be hopeless. We will feel so powerless, Lord. So help us to take our eyes from our situations, from our schoolwork, and I'm not saying we stop doing our schoolwork, but we put our faith in you and we say, God, we want you to be our strength. We want you to help us and give us the love, give us the power, the determination to get through the obstacles that we face. So, Father, help us to live in faith by holding on to your words, by praying to you and using these powerful words that we have, that you have given us, to give those words to you in prayer. And may we be able to really live by faith each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
All right, brothers and sisters, um, we have some announcements. Um, as we always have, uh, our Zoom meetings, uh, Bible study, uh, sharing, praying, and um, some games are Saturdays at 8 p.m. So please join us. Uh, it's been really, really, really fun time, really growing deeper. I see you guys growing. Um, also, um, we have a special announcement that I'm going to be um, able to bring my wife and uh, Teddy, my son, um, and my wife needs um, help bringing him because okay, he's a big boy now, okay? But also, uh, we have some paperwork and some things to take care of, um, so I'll be gone for um, a couple weeks, uh, but our worship will continue like this, so don't worry about that. Uh, I'll, I'll continue to send the links. Um, so please uh, join us next week and uh, please pray for me and, and my son and my wife that we, we can come back safely. Um, so we we'll appreciate that. Okay, uh, let's finish with the Lord's Prayer um, and yeah, we'll finish our, our worship. Let's pray together. Let's close our eyes. Our Father in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Bless you guys. All right, see you soon.